Hi everyone, I'm Rachel with Limbo's product team. Today, we'll be talking about how to bulk import assets in Limbo. Adding assets should be one of the first things you do when setting up your Limbo account, because almost all work in Limbo depends on having assets. Bulk importing allows you to quickly add a large sum of assets into Limbo at one time. Depending on your plan and permissions with Limbo, your screen may look different than mine. If you have any questions, reach out to our support team. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we get into the how-to, let's touch on some important best practices. You can import up to 2,000 assets and 50 fields into Limbo in a single import. If you need to import more, batch your data into separate import files. We provide a sample spreadsheet, also known as the sample import file, that can be used to set up your asset fields and make importing easier. The spreadsheet includes sample rows to show you how to populate each field. You should remove those examples and fill them in with the correct data for your import. Within the spreadsheet, hovering over a column name will show you an explanation of what it's for and how you need to format the data to import properly. Field types such as text, number, or currency cannot be edited once created, so it's best to set up your fields with the correct field type in Limbo first before your bulk import. If you misspell a column name for an existing field that's already in Limbo, the system may bypass the intended field match and create an additional custom field, so be sure to double check that you've spelled everything as intended. Be mindful of formatting mistakes. If something is formatted incorrectly in your spreadsheet, you'll receive an error message about what went wrong, but checking for errors before you upload will save you any hassle. Photos, documents, or files of any kind cannot be bulk imported due to the limitations of CSV files. You can add your files manually once your import is complete. We recommend you do a test run with a small data set before attempting a large import. This gives you the opportunity to make sure your data is being imported correctly and everything looks as it should. And finally, be patient with the system. If you're importing a large data set, it will take the system some time to process the information. Before performing a bulk import, make sure any custom fields are set up in Limbo first. Field types such as text, number, or currency cannot be edited once created, which is why we recommend doing this within the system. To do this, navigate to the Manage Assets page. Click on the Edit Visible Columns icon and click Add Column. Name your desired field. In this example, I want to add serial number as a field for my assets. Then select your field type. I'll use the text type in case my serial numbers contain any letters. Then click Create. I'll do one more field. This time it will be a dropdown. For this example, I want to create a dropdown menu for up-down status. I'll create my new field by repeating the same process. Once I choose dropdown as my field type and click Create, I'll be taken to a new window. I'll add up and down as field options and exit when I'm done. When I configure my fields in the import file, I'll add serial number and status as custom fields. We'll cover this again in just a bit. Now let's set up the import file. On the Manage Assets page, click on the Import Export button from the toolbar in the top right corner. From the new dropdown, select Import Assets. You will be taken to a new window with a list of instructions. Download the spreadsheet by clicking on Sample Import File. Open the file. Do not remove or change the required fields. The following fields must be filled out in order for your assets to import successfully. Asset Name and Parent Asset. Remember to use unique names for your assets. Using differentiators like numbers or letters can help you do this. For example, if you have two of the same asset, you can name one asset-001 and the other asset-002. By default, Limbo will not allow you to import asset names that are duplicates of existing data in Limbo. While this can be turned off in settings, we don't recommend it. The order in which you add your assets to the sample spreadsheet is critical to creating the asset hierarchy. An asset hierarchy defines the relationship between parent assets and children assets in Limbo, which can be configured directly from a bulk import. Add your parent asset first, and then its child assets. In this example, the garage is our parent asset. 
For assets like the garage that are not a child of another asset, we need to enter a value of zero in the parent asset column. This tells Limble that the asset does not need to be added as a child to another asset within a hierarchy. Next, add your child assets. These should go immediately under their direct parent asset. In the parent asset column, add the parent's asset name. In this example, the green mowers, cart fleet, and shop equipment are all child assets of the garage, so we need to add them under garage and enter garage in the parent asset column. I'll repeat this process for the rest of my assets. In this example, grinder and heating and air are child assets of shop equipment, so these will go directly after shop equipment and we'll enter shop equipment in the parent asset column. Finally, I'm going to add two more assets, heater and Salem HVAC unit one. These are both child assets of heating and air, so they're added right below heating and air, and we'll add heating and air to the parent asset column. Now you can see the full hierarchy has been built within the spreadsheet. Again, note that parent assets must be placed before their child assets, Otherwise, the hierarchy will not import as intended. When imported into Limble, the assets will maintain their hierarchy with the parent-child relationships set in the spreadsheet. Now let's take a look at the optional fields. Limble offers category, make, and model as default fields, so they're included in the file. If you don't need this information, simply delete the column from your import file. The final field is optional custom fields. You can use and duplicate this field to import information for fields you already have set up in Limble. If you don't have any custom fields to include, you can delete this column. Since we set up serial number as a field in Limble earlier, now I can enter that field in my spreadsheet and import my information. I'm going to change the name of this field to be serial number and enter my data in the rows below. Then I'll add the status dropdown. To add more custom fields, copy the column, then change the name to match the existing field in Limble. I'll rename this status to match my existing field in Limble. For the dropdown option, remember only to use the options that were previously configured in Limble. In this example, I can either enter up or down, since those are the options I created in the system. Make sure to double check that you've spelled the field name exactly as you have it in Limble. Spelling errors will bypass the intended field match and create an additional custom field. Once you've added your data, you're ready to upload. As mentioned earlier, you are limited to 2000 assets and 50 fields per import. On the Manage Assets page, navigate back to the Import screen again by clicking the Import Export button and choosing Import Assets from the dropdown. Click Upload file, select your file, and then click open, and then your import will begin. In the new window, you can click on the blue text to see a list of all of the assets being imported. When you're ready to proceed, click confirm. Now your assets will be added to Limble. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can visit our help center anytime for lots of great information about the importing process reach out to our support team, or talk to your Limbal CSM to learn more.